Come now is the time to worship. Uh, how great that we can be connected, we can link together, we can worship. Uh, we can put time aside now just to praise God, to count our blessings, to thank him for his goodness, to come together in worship and to read his word. Uh, let me welcome you warmly in the name of our Lord Jesus uh, to our evening service here at St. Mark's this first Sunday in March as we travel through Lent together. Let's uh, continue just to thank God, to lift up his name with the sound of singing uh, wherever you are. Uh, let me encourage you to join in uh, the next two songs. We're going to have two uh, more traditional hymns, but the words of both of them will be on the screen. Uh, let's praise God together. Let's uh, praise my soul, the King of heaven. Let's crown him with many crowns.
Thank you, Epi, for leading us in praise and worship. Praise God for his goodness. Crown him as the Lord of our hearts. Now, uh, if you've been with us these last few Sunday evenings since the beginning of the year, you'll know that uh, we've been learning from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. And I'm going to read tonight Joshua chapter 8, and then I'm delighted to welcome Shuri to share on this chapter. Those of you who don't know Shuri, uh, Shuri works for us uh, in the church as our debt centre manager. Uh, we have a debt centre project uh, in partnership with Christians Against Poverty, CAP, and Shuri is our leader in coming alongside people in debt. And she has some remarkable testimonies and stories of people whose lives have been changed by this uh, great inspired uh, ministry. Uh, Shuri also is the coordinator of the Lambeth Street Pastors. Uh, obviously, street pastors have had to adapt their work. Uh, people haven't been out on the streets as much as uh, they were pre-COVID uh, pandemic, uh, but the ministry of street pastors has continued and will continue, um, and no doubt there will be uh, more need uh, for their evening patrols in the coming months as we move along that roadmap to uh, restrictions being lifted. If you're interested in either being involved in the debt ministry or debt advice ministry or the work of street pastors, please get in touch with me or with Shuri. We'd be delighted to hear from you. So let's go to Joshua chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men. He sent them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you, be on the alert. I and all those with me will advance on the city. And when the men come out against us as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city. They will say, they're running away from us as they did before. So when we flee from them, you are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it into your hand. When you have taken the city, set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it. You have my orders. Then Joshua sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent that night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered the army, and he and the leaders of Israel marched before them to Ai. The entire force that was with him marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up camp north of Ai, with the valley between them and the city. Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai, to the west of the city. So the soldiers took up their positions, with the main camp to the north of the city and the ambush to the west of it. That night Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at a certain place overlooking the Arabah. But he did not know that an ambush had been set against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled towards the wilderness. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were lured away from the city. Not a man remained in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold out towards Ai the javelin that is in your hand, for into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out towards the city the javelin that was in his hand. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position. They rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set it on fire. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising up into the sky. But they had no chance to escape in any direction. The Israelites who had been fleeing towards the wilderness had turned back against their pursuers. But when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that smoke was going up from it, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. Those in the ambush also came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the middle, with Israelites on both sides. Israel cut them down, leaving them neither survivors nor fugitives. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the wilderness where they had chased them, when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed those who were in it. Twelve thousand men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. 
for Joshua did not draw back the hand that held out his javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and plunder of this city, as the Lord had instructed Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. He impaled the body of the king of Ai on a pole and left it there until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered them to take the body from the pole, throw it down at the entrance of the city gate. They raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains to this day. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. Just as Moses, the servant of of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites, he built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tool has been used. On it they offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings. There, in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on stones a copy of the law of Moses. All the Israelites with their elders, officials and judges were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, facing the Levitical priests who carried it. Both the foreigners living among them and the native-born were there. Half of the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had formerly commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Afterwards, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and all the foreigners who lived among them. That was uh, Joshua chapter 8. Let me welcome Shuri. Thank you, Steve, for reading chapter 8 of Joshua for me. Let's pray. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Use me to speak to your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're looking at Joshua. So I've captured the first eight chapters, because we're on chapter eight tonight, um, into a one-liner. What is that chapter saying to us? Chapter one, be strong and courageous. Trust God and follow his word. Chapter two, even in the midst of danger, God can protect you. Chapter three, trust God's leading as he will always make a way when there seems to be no way. Chapter four, God is a God of faithfulness who leads his people across the water once again. Chapter five, obedience brings provision. Chapter six, if God is for you, who can be against you? Chapter seven, it is futile to disobey God. There is no secret he doesn't know. Chapter 8, the God of second chances. And this is where we are tonight. So just to recapture chapter 7, we're looking at God of second chances. In chapter 7, the passage tells us how the people of God were given instructions on how to conquer their enemies. We also see history repeat itself as Achan decided to disobey the commandment of God, which has been spoken to him and all the people through Joshua. And he took that which he should not have taken, which caused God to be angry with the children of Israel because of his sin. If we go back to Numbers 25, verses 1 to 11, it reads, While the Israelites were camped at Archesia Grove, some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relations with local Moabite women. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods, so the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the gods of Moab. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal of Peor, causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. The Lord issued the following command to Moses, seize all the ringleaders and execute them before the Lord in broad daylight. So his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. So Moses ordered Israel's judges, each of you must put to death the man under your authority who have joined in worship, worshiping Baal of Peor. 
Just then, one of the Israelites' men brought a Midianite woman into his tent, right before the eyes of Moses and all the people, as everyone was weeping at the entrance of the tabernacle. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear and rushed after the man into his tent. Phineas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach. So the plague against the Israelites was stopped, but not before 24,000 people had died. Then the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away from the Israelites by being as zealous among them as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel as I had intended to do in my zealous anger. This shows us a similar situation where God's people died. 24,000 people, to be exact, because of the sin of others. And as with Achan, his actions led not only to his death, but to the death of all those connected to him. This reminds me of Romans 5.15 that tells us, by one man's sin, many die. This is a very stark reminder that we cannot hide our sins from God. The things we do against God will harm us and others. The Lord showed Joshua exactly who that person was and what had happened because the Lord is all-seeing and all-knowing. No matter what you do, how far you hide it, you know, from everyone else or even yourself, the Lord God knows all about it. God has no secrets and he doesn't want us to have secrets from him. So fast forward to chapter 8, tonight's passage. And here we see that God is a God of second chances. The sin of one man that caused the children of Israel to flee from the people of Ai, which brought death and the loss of, of comrades and brothers in arms, was forgiven when the people of God followed his instructions to the letter. Victory was theirs. He is the same God that gave them the victory over the people of Ai the second time around. So what are you facing that you need victory over today? Where did you disobey God and do your own thing? Questions we need to ask ourselves as children of God. God gave the people of Israel instructions which would allow them to have the victory. As they followed God's plan, the people of Ai thought that they were winning as they chased Joshua and some of his men into the wilderness. Unfortunately, they did not see the ambush coming and turned to see their city defeated as they were slaughtered. All the people of Ai were slain. No one was left alive. Even the king had a gruesome and shameful end, as verse 28 tells us. So Joshua burned the town of Ai. And, sorry, so Joshua burned the town of Ai, and it became a permanent mound of ruins, desolate to this very day. So what is this scripture telling us? When God gets rid of that which is good, not good for our lives, nor no beneficial to us in um, our relationship or our walk with God. He completely removes it. He doesn't leave a little bit behind. He completely removes it. This is not only subjected to objects, but also to people who do not help our walk or relationship with God. So what or who is God removing from your life and my life? A warning, do not stand in his way. Let God do what only God can do. 
As we come to the end of chapter 8, we see Joshua building an altar to give God thanks. He writes the law upon the stones, which was a reminder of the covenant, the pledge between God and the people of Israel. He calls the priests to bless all the people. He then reads the law given by Moses to all the people. All the people included the women, children, and those who were immigrants and their children that lived with God's people. No one, no one was left out of the blessing of the Lord. So where one man's sin brought sin and death into the camp, just as Adam's sin brought sin and death into the world, but as a forerunner of what Jesus would do on the cross for us, the people were blessed because of Joshua's obedience. Achan wanted some of God's glory and took what did not belong to him. And he and those connected to him died. Joshua, through his obedience, gave all the glory to God and lived. And the people connected to him were blessed. So who will you choose to be like? Achan? I hope not. Or Joshua? My prayer is that we will all choose life and obedience as Joshua did, giving God all the glory with our lives. Let us pray. Romans 5, 15. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Father, help us to come to you sincerely. Help us to seek your forgiveness wholeheartedly. Help us to forgive those who have hurt us. Help us to let go of those things that you wish to remove from our lives. And help us to understand why they need to be removed. Help us to walk closely with you, humbly with you. So that as you give us the abundant life through Christ Jesus, our Lord, we will be a blessing to many. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Shui. Let's uh, take a moment to pray together for our parish, our community, our church, and for one another. Father, we thank you that we can meet in the name of the Lord Jesus. We can connect together uh, in this way. Father, we bring before you uh, the community in which we are set, and we pray particularly for our schools. We pray for our two church schools, our special responsibility to Mark's Primary School, led by the head teacher Shola Ingram and Archbishop Tennyson's High School, Secondary School, led by the head teacher Simon Wilson. Pray for these school leaders and their staff as they prepare to welcome children, pupils back uh, this week. Pray, Lord God, for your hand upon all the arrangements, the requirements that uh, are put on schools to uh, undertake tests for particularly the secondary school students. Pray that uh, these next few weeks, uh, these three and a half weeks or so between now and Easter holidays, would be really fruitful times, times where children can really enjoy being with one another again. Pray that our schools would not uh, have the hiccup of being closed again with uh, new infections or the spread of the coronavirus. Pray for the health and strength of the teachers. Pray that they might uh, have a sense of being renewed and uh, ready, enthusiastic for the task of in-person teaching again. Just pray, Lord God, that our schools would be places of fun, of learning, of safety, and places where there's an opportunity to talk about the Lord Jesus, about his love and the purposes of God uh, in our lives. Lord, we just simply commit to you all those going back to school uh, tomorrow morning. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to pray for the government as they make decisions about the lifting of restrictions, as uh, we have begun the journey on the roadmap to lifting of restrictions. Pray that the numbers of infections, and especially the number of lives being lost, would continue to, to fall. We pray, Lord God, for the vaccination programme. Pray that these vaccines would indeed be effective. Thank you that the early signs seem to be uh, very encouraging. But we pray that they would indeed be effective in protecting people uh, from the coronavirus, from any new variants of the, of the uh, virus. And we pray on for the Ministry of Vaccinating uh, in our partnership with the local health team at Montgomery Hall. Pray for the vaccination clinic on Tuesday and any other days uh, this week, uh, which might uh, be set uh, depending on the delivery of the vaccines. Pray on for the staff and volunteers uh, who are ministering uh, health and opportunity to those who are coming in. Pray on, Lord God, for the ministry which Cherie leads us on in our coming alongside those in debt, and also coming alongside those who may be in distress or in need on the streets, the work of the street pastors. Pray, Lord God, as uh, coming weeks we'll see uh, pubs and restaurants and nightlife uh, open up again. Pray, Lord God, that uh, the Ministry of Street Pastors would be valued and would be seen as a way of simply holding out uh, the love of the Lord Jesus to those around us. Put into your hands uh, our own particular concerns, people on our own hearts and minds, uh, giving you thanks for those things which have encouraged us, and just praying your blessing and healing on those we know who are hurting those who are broken, those who are struggling with their life at the moment. In a moment of quiet, let's simply bring before God those on our hearts this evening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, giving you thanks for our links uh, with congregations in Nigeria, in Ghana, Sierra Leone, Burundi, South Sudan. Those particular links which we have as a church. Pray your blessing on our brothers and sisters in those different places this evening. And for ourselves, for each one of us, Lord, may we uh, respond to the message we've heard this evening. To take you at your word, to trust you, to obey to know that you are watching over us, that nothing is hidden from you. May that be a comfort to us uh, rather than uh, a sense of alarm. May we delight to walk in your way, to stand on your promises and to receive the blessings of life lived uh, in companionship with you. Life lived now and indeed uh, through eternity. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. We're going to have uh, one final hymn, and it's really a hymn of commitment, uh, consecration. Uh, the people at the end of uh, Joshua chapter 8 heard what God wanted. Joshua read the law, and there was that sense of renewing uh, their commitment. It was uh, the theme, really, of this morning's Bible passage, too, uh, from Nehemiah chapter 10. A sense of renewal, renewing the covenant, saying, uh, as for me, as for each one of us, we are going to follow the way of God. We are committing ourselves to his ways, his laws, his principles, his love. And so uh, the hymn we've got, which is a response, is take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. The prayer we can echo in our own hearts, whether you want to join in with the words or just enjoy uh, the music of those singing it. Uh, let me wish you a very good week. Uh, notices, uh, if you're on the PCC, we have a meeting which will be conducted by Zoom uh, on Thursday at 7.30. Um, as I mentioned in the prayers, the vaccination centre is running at the Montgomery Hall on uh, Tuesday this week. Uh, it's sort of set at just a few days' notice when they get notice of when the delivery of the vaccines will arrive. But do pray on uh, for that programme. And as again, as I was praying, let's uh, continue just to hold our schools 
our children, our students, our youth in uh, God's hands uh, as they transition back to uh, proper uh, schooling rather than having to school from home. Congratulations. Well done to those parents uh, who've been uh, running homeschooling. I think uh, from what I hear, most of you are relieved uh, that uh, the time has come uh, to allow children to go back to school. But let's continue just to pray God's hand on that. Uh, let me say a final prayer of blessing and then we will hear that hymn to conclude. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and upon all those whom you love now and forever. Amen. <laughs>